Hello and happy gaming everyone. This is Dark Sage Walker and I just recently came across that extremely good extremely good commercial for the delay to the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe Edition. Not gonna lie, didn't even know that that was a thing. Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe. Eh, imagine that. But it made me think, you know, I haven't really played Stanley Parable all that much. My roommates played it a lot. I've seen him really really have some fun with this and made me think, you know what? Let's record some Stanley Parable. I've actually I've not really experienced much of this game for myself, so I'm very interested. The loading is killing me. Come on, game. You can do it. Is it like load once and then that's like everything? Come on. This is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor on his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it soul winding, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. Oh, was he? And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour, when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, CRT. call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened, this complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. Okay, now we're free to move. Hold on. I want to see something. <laughs> A lot. What? Are you serious? Oh, okay, that just made my day. Okay, let's improve the aspect ratio and the resolution. There we go. Overlay display, field division. Okay, cool. Oh, no, no. Display mode run in a window. I mean, yeah, I guess. <laughs> okay, I guess I should have known that would have happened when I went to change the resolution. But we're back! Alright, let's start exploring other rooms. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. What does that say? I like... Oh no, I hate Mondays. Yeah, most people do. No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. Computer off, motherfucker. Starts.
What does this one say now? Be my Valentine. Admittedly, it's a very creepy atmosphere, but... Just an empty office building? Yeah, that's... That's like creepy pasta territory right there. Not how doors work. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Did I? Did I open? Did I enter the door on my left? Is that really a good idea? Do you really think I should enter the door on my left? This is my first time playing, so I'm going to go for a base ending first. And one thing I found out about myself playing games like this and Reventure. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Perfect method for, dis for solving a dispute with your. Okay, use slides to ensure. <coughs> <laughs> you most of all isn't that sweet what is this what do people want things <laughs> number of slides <laughs> oh, that's so great Stanley just stood there doing nothing at all. He seems to think I have nothing better to do with my time than to sit around and describe every fascinating little detail of his inability to do anything. This is why Stanley and I are on such good terms. Sorry, Mr. Narrator, but I've got to read this stuff. Monetize free to shut up. Okay, that's about everything. Do not alter without consulting whiteboard manager? Well, now I want to alter it. Why would you give me that and then expect me not to do it? Oh, you people. Who of my desk? Okay, that's really good. All right, moving on. Wait. Stanley stepped into the broom closet, but there was nothing here, so he turned around and got back on track. Hold on. There's an ending for this, isn't there? Hold on, I kind of want to do this. There was nothing here. No choice to make, no path to follow, just an empty broom closet. No Hold reason on. to still be here. No, I'm sorry. I've got to do this. Look at that wrench. It was baffling that Stanley was still just sitting in the broom closet. Don't he wasn't even doing anything. At least if there was something to interact with, he'd be justified in some way. Okay. And it is. He's literally just standing there doing sweet F.A. Look at this duct tape. Look at that Allen wrench. Oh my god, it's a good wrench. Are you, are you really still in the broom closet? Standing around doing nothing? Why? <clears throat> Please offer me some explanation here. I'm, I'm genuinely confused. It, it's comfortable. I like it. It's copper wire. You do realize there's no choice or anything in here, right? If I'd said Stanley walked past the broom closet, at least you would have had a reason for exploring it to find out. But it didn't even occur to me, because literally, this closet is of absolutely no significance to the story whatsoever. I never would have thought to mention it. Look, there's a broom here. It's aptly named. 
Maybe to you this is somehow its own branching path. Maybe when you go talk about this with your friend, you'll say, Oh, did you get the broom closet ending? The broom closet ending was my favorite. I hope your friends find this concerning. Nope. Stanley was fat and ugly and really, really stupid. He probably only got the job because of a family connection. That's how stupid he is. That or with drug money. Also, Stanley is addicted to drugs and hookers. I don't care, bro. Well, I've come to a very definite conclusion about what's going on right now. I've also noticed you're that dead. Shadow is you got to this broom closet, explored it a bit, and were just about to leave because there's nothing here when a physical malady of some sort shut down your central nervous system and you collapsed on the keyboard. Well, in a situation like this, the responsible thing is to alert someone nearby so as to ensure that your body is taken care of before it begins to decompose. Hello? Anyone who happens to be nearby? The person at this computer is dead. He or she has fallen prey to any number of your countless human physiological vulnerabilities. It's indicative of the long-term sustainability of your species. Please remove their corpse from the area and instruct another human to take their place at the computer, making sure they understand basic first-person video game mechanics and filling them in on the history of narrative tropes in video gaming, so that the irony and insightful commentary of this game is not lost on them. All right, when you've done that, just step out into the hallway. I'm sorry, but copper copper wiring. By the way, why are the shadows blinking? Like, am I supposed to be noticing that? Like, do I have to stay in the broom closet for an for a prolonged amount of time to get the ending, or is am I supposed to step out now? Hold on, one way to figure this out. That's right, I'm going to cheat a little bit. Alright, I should be able to figure out how to get a broom closet ending. Alright. Really looking forward to Ultra Deluxe. I've, I've, been, I've now played this game for a grand total of about 15 minutes and I'm just loving it. Okay, okay, so it's not actually an ending, but I now know a couple of things, so I want to try this. Ah, second player. It's good to have you on board. I guarantee you can't do any worse than the person who came before you. You too? Unbelievable. I'm at the mercy of an entire species of invalids. Perhaps there's a monkey nearby you can hand the controls to. A fish? Fungus? Look. You can hammer out the details, I'm not particularly picky. I'll just be waiting for when you're ready to pick up the story again. <laughs> okay, let's actually move on. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. I should say no, but I'm curious. There's so many choices to make.
Executive bathroom? Wait. Why don't I get an executive ba- I want an executive bathroom! Ah, oh, let me have an executive bathroom! Ah! Okay. No more executive bathroom. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked, unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this, what dark secret was being held from him. What he could not have known was that the keypad behind the boss's desk guarded the terrible truth that his boss had been keeping from him. And so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number, 28 four five but of course Stanley couldn't possibly have known this no no he couldn't have I mean, why, Stanley why? just sat around twiddling his thumbs trying to input anything on the device was useless since he could never possibly know that the combination was two eight four five Say the combination is two eight four five. What if I say two, it's a different eight, number? Two eight four five. Hey, let me explore. There's a piano here. I want to play the piano. Okay. So what happens if I input a different password entirely? Forgot, but it turns out that the panel's emergency override kicked in, and the door just opened all by itself. And Stanley got the hell along with the story. Well, whoop de do. Oh, there it is. I'm one of those people that likes to fiddle with things. So, I mean, apologies to Mr. Narrator if he thinks I'm just being a big old doomus. Nothing over here. Shame. Ooh, more wiring. Hey guys. How's it going? More long loading screen. It's okay. It's okay. Descending deeper into the building, Stanley realized he felt a bit peculiar. It was a stirring of emotion in his chest, as though he felt more free to think for himself, to question the nature of his job. Why did he feel this now, when for years it had never occurred to him? This question would not go unanswered for long. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. Wait, but that says escape. I I, I want to I want I want to escape. Escape. You know what? I'm just gonna follow the very first ending. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold? Stanley thought to himself. Did he have the strength to find out? Well, there's only one way to go, so I may as well. Now the monitors jumped to life, their true nature revealed. Each bore the number of an employee in the building, Stanley's co-workers. The lives of so many individuals reduced Ooh. to images on a screen, and Stanley, one of them, eternally monitored in this place where freedom meant nothing. There you go. Wait, what did that say? Employee observation protocol. Hmm. 
Ooh wee! To be fair, I've seen this ending before, but yeah, I was. This mind control facility, it was too horrible to believe. It couldn't be true. Had Stanley really been under someone's control all this time? Was this the only reason he was happy Fire. with his boring job? That his emotions had been manipulated to accept it blindly? No. He refused to believe it. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never. It was unthinkable. Wasn't it? Was it even possible? Had he truly spent his entire life utterly blind to the world? There it is really going ham on this. The heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions. Happy or sad or content. Walking, eating, working. All of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. For he would dismantle the controls once and for all. Uh, are you sure? Are you sure? Because I kind of... I kind of want to... Hold on. I kind of want to do this for myself. No, because I can always come back here and do this again. It's not like you only get one option. You can come back and do it a bunch. So let's see. Let's just go ahead and play along. See what happens. Or you know, just end up looking like an idiot. Where does this go? Nowhere, okay. You have a nice modern doorknob. Four. Okay, what did that do? Wait, what did number four do? Maybe I'm just very confused. One, two. It's five. What in the hell? What are you? Oh, three. Cool. Why was they at three? Okay, so. More than likely, there's something to this, but I think right now I just want to... Oh, what am I going to go down here? Red pretty lights. Woo! Red pretty lights. Red pretty lights. Alright, so let's go ahead and enter the facility power. And when at last he found the source of the room's power, he knew it was his duty, his obligation, to put an end to this horrible place and to everything it stood for. Hello, hello game? Blackness and a rising chill of uncertainty. Was it over? That's what I want to know. Yes. He had won. He had defeated the machine. Unshackled himself from someone else's command. Freedom was mere moments away. And yet, even as the immense door slowly opened, Stanley reflected on how many puzzles still lay unsolved. Where had his co-workers gone? 
How had he been freed from the machine's grasp? What other mysteries did this strange building hold? But as sunlight streamed into the chamber, he realized none of this mattered to him. For it was not knowledge or even power that he had been seeking, but happiness. Perhaps his goal had not been to understand, but to let go. No longer would anyone tell him where to go, what to do, or how to feel. Whatever life he lives, it will be his. And that was all he needed to know. It was, perhaps, the only thing worth knowing. Stanley stepped through the open door. There's probably no reason to turn around at that point. Stanley felt the cool breeze upon his skin, the feeling of liberation, the immense possibility of the new path before him. This was exactly the way, right now, that things were meant to happen. And Stanley was happy. Well, all right then. It's a very interesting ending. It's the expected ending. But now I'm curious about something. Let's go ahead and- Stanley had never seen the office this brightly lit. Was it a sign of something? He hoped it was. He hoped very much that it was. Is a sign that I'm going for another ending. Let's go. Let's go for a second ending while I'm here. This is a game I'll probably very much want to come back to. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. And I'll do it. We're gonna go through most of the same, most of the same motions, but there will be a difference. Yet, there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. <laughs> no, we're not doing the broom closet thing again. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Yeah, boss. Coming for you. Coming for you. I still want to get into that executive bathroom. Yep. Oh. It opened. Unfortunately, nothing, nothing to do in the executive bathroom, at least not this time around. Whoa. Business strategy. Your business strategy is to kill a panda? What kind of a terrible person are you?
Wait, did it just deposit me back in the same spot? Hold on, I'm confused. Sad, the elevator doesn't go anywhere. Well, maybe it might in a different ending. Now that I think about it. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. What could it mean? Stanley wondered aloud to nobody. He began wildly tearing through papers on the boss's desk, pulling books off the shelf, looking behind paintings, desperate for clues to his situation. But his attention was caught by a keypad behind the boss's desk. What could its purpose be? In fact, this keypad guarded the terrible secret that lay buried below his feet. And so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number. 2845. But of course, Stanley couldn't possibly have known this. Yet incredibly, by simply pushing random buttons on the keypad, Stanley happened to input the correct code by sheer luck. Amazing. He stepped into the newly opened passageway. All right. So this time, I think instead of going to the mind control facility, we're just going to take that ro that road marked escape. I want to get out. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. Yep, there it is, all right. I want to get out. Although this passageway had the word escape written on it, the truth was that at the end of this hall, Stanley would meet his violent death. Are you sure about that? Are you sure about that? The door behind him was not shut. Stanley still had every opportunity to turn around and get back on track. At this point, Stanley was making a conscious, concerted effort to walk forward and willingly confront his death. Then Stanley went splat. As the machine whirred into motion and Stanley was inched closer and closer to his demise, he reflected that his life had been of no consequence whatsoever. Stanley can't see the bigger picture. He doesn't know the real story, trapped forever in his narrow vision of what this world is. Perhaps his death was of no great loss, like plugging the eyeballs from a blind man. And so he resigned and willingly accepted this violent end to his brief and shallow life. There was Stanley. Farewell, Stanley, cried the narrator as Stanley was led helplessly into the enormous metal jaws. In a single visceral what? instant, Stanley was obliterated as the machine crushed every bone in his body, killing him instantly. Okay... What have I stumbled upon? What did I do? And yet it would be just a few minutes before Stanley would restart the game back in his office as alive as ever. What exactly did the narrator think he was going to accomplish? What? When every path you can walk has been created for you long in advance, death becomes meaningless, making life the same. Do you see now? Do you see that Stanley was already dead from the moment he hit start? What the heck? 
nature paintings. Love it. The office. I think we have a second narrator here. Writing as narrator. <laughs> Woo! All right, what's this way? Maintenance room, an early version of the maintenance room. Oh, hello, stairs. to win. Funny. Oh my goodness, I'm loving this. Early version of the lounge. Interesting, the cargo lift. Interesting. All right, I'm digging this so far. Meeting room. Huh, there can't be slides over there. What's this way? I'm very confused. <laughs> so we're just looking at the assets that were used in the early access version of Stanley Parable. This is just a museum. Up. Stanley's office from multiple angles. Actually, it's all the same angle three times. All right. Well, the exit door is over here. <laughs> oh, look at these two! How they wish to destroy one another! How they wish to control one another. How they both wish to be free. Oh. Can you see? Can you see how much they need one another? No, perhaps not. Sometimes these things cannot be seen. But listen to me. You can still save these two. You can stop the program before they both fail. Push escape and press quit. There's no other way to beat this game. As long as you move forward, you'll be walking someone else's path. Stop now and be your only true choice. Whatever you do, choose it. Don't let time choose for you. Don't let time choose. <laughs> Splat. Alright, wasn't about to quit out of the game. I'm still recording. Okay, now what? Is anything gonna happen? I mean, I suppose not, but... I actually quit to menu. I mean, that would, that would be how you, you know... 
stop the game. Well, my guess is that that's the end of that, so, uh, more than likely I'm going to drop another episode of this on you at some point or another, because this, I don't know, like I was saying earlier, games like this, like Reventure, games that are in, to some extent icy, I and mean, I haven't really gotten in that far into that game yet, but the idea that your choices com completely shift everything else around you. I don't know, I like that sort of thing. Games that are more or less short but have a ton of different endings. It's, I get a strange telephone as well. It's, for some reason, games like that really catch my interest. Games about choice and what those choices mean to the outcome of your state or whatever. I don't know. It's fascinating to me. It really is. So I guess take that with a grain of salt. But there's no reason to keep sitting here on a blank screen, so I'm going to cut it short here. Guys, thank you very much for watching. If you like what you saw, subscribe, hit the bell, drop a like, leave a comment. I'd love to hear what you guys think about all of this, and I will be back with some more stuff soon. My name is Dark Sage Walker, and I will be seeing you. Bye-bye, dark screen. Hey. Hey, what is this? What is this? You're tricking me!